I have like this three day rule. Like I'll give a guy, like I'll meet someone and if um, they were nervous, like that's fine. First date, second date, I'll, I'll, I'll make a decision, third date. And then. Um, uh, will you give them, will you give them a chance if they sort of, if like you said, nervous, if they're nervous or if you, they sort of drop the ball in some way on the first date, are you likely to still give them another chance then? Yeah. So like, I'll go on another date. I'll go on like three or four and then make mm. some sort of decision because I, if I already know that I'm not interested, I, I'm not the type to like waste anyone's time. So I'd much rather be clear and say, Hey, like I'd either like to be friends or, um, or something like that. I don't know if other women do that or anything, but uh, I'm, I'm huge on not wasting anyone's time. If I already know that I either like you or not like you, I don't like to drag anything on that's not gonna- Some guys, some guys complain because they feel that um, women can be quite harsh, you know, quite ruthless. Oh, interesting. Sense. You, you, you know, in the sense that well, the were... guy will go, the, <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't you, don't, don't you believe, don't you, don't you believe that? Don't you, don't, don't you, I mean, like sometimes guys will say something like, um, I went on the date and it was all going up great and I think she liked me and then I did this one thing and then she just, you know, that was it. She just went cold and then I texted her and she ghosted me. Like, when I think Anna Bay, I think someone who is refined, someone who knows who she is and then teaches women how mm. to be that confident version of herself in a, a, a traditional, in a very traditional way. And I think a lot of women have almost kind of forgotten what that's like. And she brings this to the surface where it's okay to feel and um, embrace traditional values. So I really like that about her. Um, it, it can range from simple topics like, like when you're going out to go on a date, like here's how to dress or here's mm. how to um, build a simple closet that's uh, classy and elegant. She always uses those words, classy and elegant. Like it's it's very important that we don't come across as needy as well, that we should be focused on the things that are in our life and that the, the right man will will persist and pursue. Yeah. Uh, the message that I'm getting from her. So it's interesting to see that, that like for, for men, we're, the teaching also is to not have this overly needy, uh, I guess, yeah. behavior. Um, yeah. Which makes well, me wonder what the middle ground is. Mm, well, I suppose it depends what you want, really, in, in terms of your in terms of your dating life. I mean, would you describe yourself as a traditionalist? Are you looking for a sort of traditional kind of ultimately kind of long term relationship, marriage, all of that kind of thing? I mean, is it because it's is Anna's teaching very much geared towards that rather than towards sort of like, oh, this is how to be a party girl and have a great time and you know? Yeah, whatever. yeah, I. I I think she's um, like when I see her her content, I view it as here's how to be the best woman you can be. Yeah. And then, here, right, and then um, embrace your femininity in a traditional way, and then meet a man um, and behave accordingly. So I would say, yeah, I I like the idea of a traditional long term relationship, and mm, mm. Um, I've liked Anna Bay because she's gone and broken down things like how to have uh the best career for you like whether it's a job or how to dress and um yeah it, it's just hyper focused on how to be elegant and it's so easy mm. to do a lot of the you know the the new trendy things of these other women who look um very um uh i don't know like i, I the only word i can think of is very trendy and it's mm. interesting to see anna go back and say well actually here's what's refined here's what's classy here's what's elegant and that's what I really like about her. And then she also gears that all into here's what's classy, here's what's elegant when it comes to your dating life. Um, and mm. she also is very uh, like forward with what kind of men, uh, women who have leveled up should be also dating. Mm. That's interesting. What's Anna's perspective on being submissive? Um, I don't. You know, I think what's what's challenging and and. I, I know the word uh, submissive has been used uh, prior mm. to it. And when I think of it, it's, uh, I have a hard time with it too, because I, when I initially hear the word, I, I think, no, <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> like a big fat, no, I don't like that. But I think culturally submissive isn't necessarily like leveled down. It's, it's more, it's maybe culturally to other people submissive could mean, um, 
like su- be a more supporting role. Um, yeah. Right. And so, so there's a misunderstanding with that word. I don't think Anna Bay would, would look at that word and say, yes, we should be submissive. But I do agree that she um, would like women to look at us as a female in a relationship to accept a more traditional role. Um, mm. So I don't know if submissive would be the word that she would use. Um, I would stick to her, her classic, like, um, here's how to be a classy, elegant, Mm. Where, where would you say it sits with feminism then because i saw a couple of things where she said i mean cor- you know correct me if i'm wrong but i think she's saying i am a feminist or she describes herself as being a sort of traditional feminist but then she aligns that with but i believe that women should be submissive and there's a video about you know you should, girls should not pay on a date and all of that kind of thing which i'm not you know i, I don't have a problem with in, in principle but um i mean where does that sit with sort of contemporary feminism as we know it because it seems to be somewhat counter to it right oh totally um i can't remember all of her content so i i could also use a refresher but from what i do remember there was one video that she had described what it truly means to be um a feminist and this is the mm. thing i agree on so um for her this uh she said being a feminist is is being in strong pursuit of of what you as a female believe so whatever yeah. it may be, that's what it means to be feminine and or a feminine. Yeah. And, and she's trying to, in this particular video, it was difficult because she'd always have, you know, the traditional feminist where it's it's just this, um, I would say, the, the girl boss movement, um, strong independent, um, strong career, I do everything by myself sort of thing. And then mm. you have, um, you know, the latter. And... It, in, in, in essence, none, like, it doesn't matter. You are a woman, you are beautiful, independent, and if that's something that you want to pursue, you want, and, and, and you're female, like, to be a feminist, that's that's what we should be do, doing. We should be supporting each other, not tearing each other apart. Like, by mm. having this multi-dimensional, multi, like, like definitioned thing for feminist, you have like this feminist and this feminist and this feminist who who all believe in their version of what it's what is feminism or feminist and then yeah, yeah, what's yeah. happening is we're tearing each other apart and so what i like about anna's definition is that she's saying are if you're female and you, this is what you believe we should be um you know supporting yeah. each other for for what you want as an independent confident classy refined young woman well um, yeah i like that we're going over this the, the commitment thing with the relationship so you're saying women are are also intimidated by a commitment um i think they are i think they can be um in this in the sense i mean i don't know maybe it depends on perhaps what age she is at what point in her life she is what her particular goals are at that time but I think particularly with younger women I think if you go in and you're sort of like well listen I'm looking for a serious relationship um very early on that's going to be a little bit of a like oh whoa you know kind of thing um so even I mean you know it it might be that you are looking for that and that's fine but I just I don't think verbalizing it too early is is a good thing absolutely yeah because and this it comes back to what I was saying before because it has been said, and I don't know if I don't know how you feel about this or agree with this, but it has been said that women are the gatekeepers of sex, but men are the gatekeepers of commitment. So, in the sense that women basically decide whether things are going to go to a sexual level or not, okay? But men they kind of decide whether is this going to be a relationship or not. And so, if a guy puts all his cards on the table immediately and he's like, "I'm looking for a," I'm looking for a life partner or something, then that's almost showing his hand too early. It would almost be the same as if a girl says on immediately, all right, let's have sex. You know, it's sort of like, there's got to be a little bit of a build up to that, right? And so how do you avoid like, like bringing up the, what are we thing um, in my mind it registers as a responsible thing to do because I like, like, I don't, because a situationship could last as long as five years could last as long Mm. as 10 years like could last forever if Mm. if, so um and and i've been in one where it it did take up a lot of time and i never asked the question until i just i i realized that it it just was a waste of my life so where where do women draw the line where it is okay to do that 
Uh, well, I think the... <clears throat> I think the sort of the urgency of it is is perhaps greater for, for for women because, well, I mean, you know, obviously there are there is the the issue of wanting to have a family and to settle down and and, and those things. And I, I suppose for women, it, it's perhaps that's why there's there's somewhat greater sort of concern around this. I think for guys, it's it's and and you know, none of this is fair or, or right necessarily. But I, I suppose for guys. If they want to play it like that, then they've got a bit more time. They can just keep they can just keep things going. You know, like you say, you could keep a situation ship going for like five years, um, you know, and and, um, and and never have the question, you know. And I think actually Anna Bay um, in one of the videos I saw actually talks about this, doesn't she? She sort of there's a video she's got where she's talking about um, how do you tell if a guy's wasting your time? You know, how do you know if he's not ready? And and, and like, and, and I get it. I do. I do get it. I mean, like for, for me, to be honest, I've probably been relatively irresponsible at times in my life when I've been dating girls. And it, it hasn't really been on my mind that this was going to become anything more serious. But I've kind of liked the girl. And so it's just kept going. And I mean, I do. I do understand from the other side, the argument that, look, this is. This is kind of wasting my time, you know, in the end. Um, but girls don't always verbalize it either because I suppose they feel that they can't, right? Because it, like, the girl may be, I don't know, coming into her late 20s and she's seeing the guy, but it's, it, it, she's also probably conscious, I don't want to put this guy off by saying, well, well what's happening here? Because in the next yeah, two years, you don't I want to scare a guy off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, it's a difficult dance, isn't it, between the two genders? And it kind of depends. And I suppose this is why you get a lot of advice for women around sort of like, how do you tell if he's a player or not? How do you tell if he's serious or not? Because the, the woman's sitting there thinking, well, I like this guy and I kind of would want to be with him, but is he going to, is he serious or not? Is he going to like, you know? But I mean, again, I suppose it depends on what the woman wants in the, in the longer term. But I, I think it seems to me the truth is that most women in the end would like to, you know, to, to settle down, probably have children and, you know, get into that more stable situation. And most guys want that as well, actually, but not all guys, you know, there are guys out there who are, you know, roguish players. And, um, that I suppose those are the girls that women have got to look out for. Right. I think so. And I, I, this is where like, I'd like, I'd wish men were just honest and said, Hey, like, I, I'm really not, looking for anything and I do think it's a woman's fault when a man acts there are men who do say that there are men who who say hey I'm really not looking for anything serious they just like actively choose not to listen <laughs> so yeah, like, yeah yeah like I've seen that too um but like some some advice that I've been liking lately is is keeping things simple and and to not make too many assumptions so like mm. like for a situationship example if you are in a situation ship, if a girl is starting to develop feelings and a girl is saying, okay, like I'm starting to have all these like other feelings about this one guy, like I would go and say, hey, you should, you should probably just tell him how you feel. And then if it's not mutual, then you got your answer. It's just simple. Mm -hmm. Like why, like why drag it on and why like make, you know, why question yourself and question your independence and question all this stuff when if if he doesn't want something serious, at least you know, and there's nothing yeah. wrong. There's nothing wrong with a man wanting nothing serious. Um, but if if nothing is ever communicated, then it's it's so easy to point fingers. Well, I think it. I think the lines get blurred sometimes because I think some guys they, some guys also remember don't necessarily know if they want something serious or not. Like it's not necessarily. I, I, I mean, perhaps I'm sure there are guys out there who are just like, I never want anything serious. I'm just never going to settle down. I don't care. I'm just going to have, you know, be promiscuous and, and party and whatever. Mm -hmm. And then there are other guys who are like, I want to have a family and, you know, get the white picket fence and all of that. But I also think there are guys who are kind of in the middle who are a bit like, well, you know, I, 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 I kind of, I, I'm not sure if I've sown my wild oats yet. I'm sort of vaguely thinking maybe one day I'd like to settle down, but I'm kind of not sure. Um, I don't really know what direction I want my life to go in. And I think mate, it's in that gray area sometimes that we have the problem, right? Because those guys aren't yeah. necessarily lying in a really evil way. It's just that perhaps they don't know. They're trying to put it off. They're trying to, you know, and the woman's there like, hey, well, come on, hang on a minute. Like, what's happening here? Just... <laughs> That's interesting. That that's a really good point to bring up because not all men are like either this way or that. They're they really don't know. And and some people that I've noticed in this in this bracket is 
they've also been hurt really badly in the past. Like maybe they've gone through a divorce or they've gone through like a really bad breakup and they don't know if like that's something that they want to go through yet again. I've heard of that as well. Mm -hmm. Like, like I always, um, I was told um, this concept too, that, that men are, you know, more often than not, men want to have a special connection too, just as much as women do. And um, right. Yeah, well, I've I've heard it said on my side of the of, of the fence, if you like, that um, <clears throat> men really like affection, and I, I have friends who are guys who are just not the settling down type. You know, they're guys they're out and about, they're dating all these different girls, maybe traveling. You know, they're kind of like they're they're those kind of guys. You know, but even those guys will say, you know, they'll, they'll like once a year or every so often they'll meet a girl and they just have that special bond with her. They have that special connection. That is that oxytocin thing, isn't it? You know, the cuddling um, chemical, you know, that feeling you get when you're just with that person who's really great. Um, and even those player guys will get those, those feelings. And, you know, it has been said that actually men, everyone thinks men just want sex, but actually the thing that really gets men hooked is affection. You know, that, that sort of sense of like, oh, I can just relax and, you know, cuddle her and blah, blah, blah. So even those player guys can can feel that. But then they've got this competing thing, which is, oh, but actually I also want variety. I also want to go and meet new people. And so and so then they leave. Suddenly they disappear and ghost her and then she, it breaks her heart, which is obviously a bad thing. But um, but yeah, I think men do crave affection for sure. Um even the even the most playerish type guys, unless they're completely, unless they're like Patrick Bateman from American Psycho. I think I think most guys, to, to some degree, you know, they do have that, and I think that's why. And, and players can fall really hard for girls as well, you know, like they can hold out for a long time, and then they'll just meet a girl. And there's something about her. There's just some like thing, and they'll really fall for her. Um, so it's a it's a it's a it's a weird. It's not as clear cut as people think. Oh, interesting. So, so for, for men who, who desire the affection and desire the, um, you know, are, are more inclined to settle down. Um, what do you hear from guys who, who have that desire? Like what, what are the things that there's, what are the things that they are saying to you? Well, a lot of guys I think are looking for, you know, just looking for a girlfriend. Um, they're just looking for, they're just looking for a nice girl that they want to, they can meet to, uh, you know, to, to do exactly that, to settle down with. And I think they're looking for somebody who is, you know, attractive, but they're looking for somebody who is, who is nice, who's going to be pleasant to be with. And, and I think actually a lot of this, the traditionalist stuff that you're talking about, I think actually a lot of guys really, really like that. They really want that. You know, they're not looking for somebody who's going to be difficult to spend time with you know somebody who's gonna be really abrasive they're looking for somebody i suppose who who kind of is a little bit more feminine in a way and um you know that i suppose perhaps that runs somewhat counter to the culture as we see it now you know because women are encouraged to be a certain way and there's a certain you know some women perhaps feel that they have to behave in a more masculine way in the workplace yeah. in order to compete with guys and men i think are, are, are less attracted to that um, I think I think guys actually like a, a, a woman who has those feminine qualities. Um, so I think, but I don't I don't think their their wants are that high, really. From what I'm hearing, I think they just want a girl who you know, obviously they're attracted to, but who they can have a good time with, and who there's not going to be loads of friction. They're not going to have their balls busted the whole time, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's interesting. So it sounds like what Anna Bay is teaching can actually help. Day, well, yeah. I I, th I think it probably can. I mean, like I I just had a quick look at um, her bio before before we came on, and I think she's Estonian, isn't she? And then she lived in perhaps in uh, I oh then she I think she she's Estonian, but she lived in Sweden. But I mean, if she's Estonian, obviously it's a former Soviet Union country. It's it's still a relatively traditional place. You know, it's like it was formerly part of Russia. It's like. Um, and, and, and those, the, the, the Eastern Europe and then going into Russia, because I've been to those places, you know, they, they are much more traditional than, than we have in the UK or the, or the United States. You know, they've still got a, a much more sort of like um, old school culture, if you like, between men and women. And um, so it's likely that she's come from that sort of more slightly more traditionalist mindset. But I, yeah, I think you're right. I think actually, her, I think her, her comment, her teaching probably does help women, actually. But it, 
sort of runs slightly counter to the to the more femi more militant feminist idea of how women should be, doesn't it? Because I'm sure there might be I'm sure there might be hardcore feminists who would who would watch her stuff and be like, no, no, this is this is not good, right? Exactly. They all completely disagree. They hate her content, and I've seen comments like that, and they're just um, they they won't really have, they won't have it. And um, I, I she, did she get a lot of hate from uh, feminists then? Um, probably, and it's just because the um, the feminist probably what most other women would would envision what a feminist is. They look at her and and find that her content actually takes us backwards. And and progressive feminists would would say this is not the direction I want to go. And I think Anna Bay's response would be that's fine, you know. But she she's she's going to advocate well, for women who write who like are yeah. more yeah. Well, people, I mean, you know, people are going to have different views on this stuff. And I mean, like, I mean, I, I'm kind of like an individualist, really. I think people can do what they want to do, right? I mean, some women are going to want to be, you know, that they're, they're, they're going to want to be very contemporary feminists in their behavior. They're going to want to do a certain, behave in a certain way, you know, maybe they want to, exp you know, uh, do well in the workplace and mm -hmm. as indeed you do, you know, and, 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 and all of that stuff. And that's, that's great. That's absolutely fantastic. But, um, I mean, I I think from what I'm hearing from 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 guys that I I I work with and guys that I know from friendships and online and stuff, I th I think guys do appreciate some of the, many of the qualities that Anna's talking about, actually. Um, yeah. But as but as I say, I mean, like um, I you know I I could get flamed for for, for even saying that because pe because people feminists watching might say, well, how you know how can you say that you know blah blah blah, and it's like well. That I, I mean, all I'm doing is reporting back my sense of it, you know, from the guys right. that I've I know and I, I've worked with. I mean, some other guys may feel feel differently, you know. Um, I mean, everyone's got to find their own way with this stuff in the end, right? I don't think anything's okay. right or wrong. Um, Just knowing what you, you what you stand for, um, I get nervous sometimes too because I do agree with a lot with what Anna Anna says, and I I am friends with a lot of people who would actually 100% disagree. So, well, yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, where where do you stand personally on? On, on feminism because I, I think women that I know and, and like say my girlfriend for example I mean she is I, I think a lot of women that I know they're, they're somewhat they're somewhere in the middle with this really I mean she of course they are they are she would describe herself as, as a, a feminist but she's a she's a sort of very feminism light if, if you know what I mean like like she's not sort of and, and she, I think she would feel some of the excesses of the the more militant feminists are, are kind of slightly ridiculous and a lot of women I know away from the internet and away from Twitter and things. I, I, I like that. But I mean, whereabouts do you sit on the, on the scale? Um, as far as like the, I mean, my, my only, from what I've learned, like the feminist that I'm familiar with who would disagree with Anna Bay is going to be more, maybe perhaps more forthright, maybe um, mm. more likely to argue, uh, more likely to say, this is what I believe in and therefore X, Y, Z. Um, and maybe has a much stronger personality type, maybe a little bit uh, like more masculine in, in, in her endeavors. And, and, that's, and that's totally fine. I would agree that um, there, this is a concept from, from another um, conversation I had that if we continue going that route and we forget what our traditional roles are, it will only make dating more challenging. Um, I think there is a natural course that like men will, will want to gravitate towards and will find certain things just relatively unattractive in a female and in a partner. Um, like, I I would agree and I, I feel that I resonate more with what Anna says. So if I would describe that, it's, um, I don't know, like the way we communicate with men, it can be simple as that, um, or the way we present ourselves. She also describes, you know, the umbrella of having a feminine like career which i struggle with because i'm trying to enter a male dominated mm. career well which... how do you feel about how do you feel about that uh is there an issue with wanting to become a surgeon and uh guys maybe feeling that that's kind of a high-powered job and and perhaps being sort of intimidated by that in some way or i mean do, is that something that ever crosses your mind uh yeah like it like happens to me <laughs> really happens... yeah yeah i think the last guy broke up with me for that reason <laughs> really 
Yeah. Well, what, what did he feel that you were going to be more successful than him or, or sort I mean, of? I don't think he's going to verbalize that. But the last words I heard was, what did you think was going to happen when you became a surgeon? I was like, oh, my God, I don't know. I, I, I thought wow. you were still going to be here. <laughs> wow. Well, there you go. There you go. But I mean, that that would that wouldn't change your desire to, to have the career that you want to have. No, and I think Anna Bay's argument, and there's a there's another male dating coach I've been watching recently too. Um, that which that, one? Uh, I, I I can't remember the name. I should probably I'll, I'll send it to you. But um, it's not Matthew Hussey, is it? What? Matthew I Hussey. Know, I mean, I know Matthew Hussey, but it's this one's a relatively new one, I think. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Um. The the argument here is Anna um, advocates for women to level up in in any way, shape, or form. Um. And this other male coach has been educating, okay, so women, women are leveling up. It's not, it's not our job to make a man more masculine. Um, so this dating coach encourages men to also level up. So it's, it's just like, I, I, <clears throat> that's kind of the perception that I have right now. Um, in my personal experience, I think, that yes, it's it's a male dominated career, but it's not like other women don't do it. And um... well, I, I mean, like I say, I mean, I, ultimately, I'm an individualist, so I think everyone should just do what they want to do. You know, you make your own choices in life, and but there there are sometimes consequences to to choices. I mean, I think you were when you were talking to John in the other show, and I, I think you were talking about this particular point, and and he was, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but I think he was saying something like, you know guys high value guys aren't necessarily attracted to a woman because they're you know they've got this kind of job and blah 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 yeah i remember <laughs> yeah 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 and i mean you know like like there may there may be some truth in that you know i don't know if that's a universal truth there may be some truth in that but but ultimately everyone's just got to make their own decisions right because it's not just we can't just make decisions in terms of is this going to attract members of the opposite sex or not right do you know what i mean like it's sort of like you've got to decide okay well i want to do this particular job and to some extent if that's something you're passionate about you really want to do then you know we've got to just think well, well screw them I'm, i'll find the right person who's going to fit into that yeah do you know what i mean um yeah. and i, I mean i mean i and i would say the same thing to, to guys as well i mean like somebody I was, I was doing a live um i was doing a live stream yesterday and um somebody was saying we were talking about the idea of like what kind of persona you put forward and even down to things like what clothes do you wear what kind of image you put out there and somebody was saying something like oh so do you would you put out a, would you develop a particular like image or style in order to attract certain types of girls and i was saying, well no no sod that i was saying just 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 be the person you want to be you know don't do it to fit into a framework to kind of impress somebody else because I, I think like it's it's off it's it's good to be sort of polarizing in some ways. Do you know what I mean? Like it's good to be like I well this is what I am. This is what I stand for, and um, you know like if you like that you'll fit into that. If you don't, you don't. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, you know um, there is this idea that actually high power jobs can be problematic for, for guys. And it's certainly not, I think I think what is correct about the conversation that you have with John is that I certainly, I don't think it's, I don't think it's something that it, it adds to the attraction. I don't think it's sort of like, you know, oh, she's got she's got a PhD, so that's really sexy. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I think it's, I, I think some women believe that it's something that adds to the attraction. I don't, th I don't think it is. I think it's a neutral sort of separate issue, if you like. Yeah, I actually went and tested this out. So I remember asking some um, some people, like other males who who were who were not surgeons, right? And I said, mm. so say say a sexy hot female comes and just says she's she would like to to hang out with you, or she just expresses interest, and then later you find out she's like either some entrepreneur, massive CEO, or a surgeon, or whatever. And um, after asking these men if they found that out they said they wouldn't go on a date with her they said no i'm sorry i can't do that so i thought that was really interesting and and he and i said well she's she's gorgeous she's hot why wouldn't you go on a date with her um <laughs> mm. and it was just it was it was the reasons were all the same it was just well i can't i can't really see my i can't really see myself <clears throat> dating a surgeon i can't really see myself like dating um like a successful entrepreneur i can't do that 
So mm. if you could break that down, what is that? What are men really saying there? I, I, I think there is a certain <laughs> shallowness to guys in a sense sometimes. <laughs> I mean, there is there is some sort of, you know, I mean, listen, you know, there is there is some truth to the idea that the guy will often just quite like a girl who's working in the, who's, who's like the waitress in the local cafe or something like this. I mean, I, I think, I think there is, I think there can be in men a sort of a, 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 perhaps a desire not to have to compete with the woman and perhaps they want to perhaps feel that the woman is somewhat submissive. And I guess the, the, the issue with these high powered jobs is that it, it sort of, you know, it, it kind of indicates that the woman is the, is the opposite of that. And perhaps that even if the woman's more powerful, and I think that's going to, I think that is problematic for, for some, for some guys. I don't, I, probably not for all guys. Um, but I think that probably is problematic for, for some guys, you know, I think guys are, like I say, I think there is a certain shallowness about, about men in a way. I mean, you know, you, you know, you know what guys are attracted to and actually, you know, it doesn't really matter to the guy if the, if the woman is like working in, you know, the local cafe or, you know, whatever. I mean, um, in, in some ways that might be better, um, for some of the, for some guys, but I mean, you know, like, but, but I wanted to ask you something actually, which is the old thing about women being attracted to players rather than, um, you know, the kind of like the more nice, sensible guy who's probably going to be a, you know, good husband material. Because, I mean, firstly, is that true in your experience? But secondly, isn't that a similar sort of thing in the sense that, you know, in, in an ideal world, if a guy just works really hard and he's got a great job and he's got, he's paid into his 401k and, you know, and all of this stuff and he's got a nice, you know, life insurance plan, shouldn't women just go for that? And the, because guys will often complain because women just go for these philanderers who are cads and who are going to treat them badly and blah, blah, blah. So I, I suppose what I'm coming around to saying is we're all attracted to what we're attracted to, right? And it's like, yeah, it, it would be better if it was different, but sometimes it isn't. Right. Um, that's a really... Sorry, I, I, threw a, I threw a lot in there, but <laughs> I, suppose, I suppose the first bit was, the, the first bit was, is, is it... Is it, you know, the, the player versus sen sensible guy thing? Is that true in terms of women being more attracted to the, the former? Uh, yeah, I, I would say there's truth to that. And for reasons that I, if I were to break it down as to why women find that like enticing or exciting and, and, and they'd see the sensible mm. man and, and they'd say, oh, I don't know, he's kind of boring. Um, I, for, I would say for, for, young, for younger women, I remember myself having like, being that. enticed for that reason um obviously not anymore but like when i <laughs> obviously. i can sense a player and i'm like uh you're a waste of my time um but like for for women when they say that they like or, or my younger friends who are who are women they'd say i really like the bad boy i like the the danger i like this and they, they seem to be very smooth i, I think it's, it's just in the infatuation game is is so prevalent and very good with these these kinds of men and i i agree that it's very easy for a woman to fall for that um if you ask like you know should they go for the sensible guy yeah i think they should i just think they don't um <laughs> but don't but but that being the case don't mm -hmm. you think there's a sort of like isn't there a parallel there? Because in theory, guys should go for the high-powered, successful woman, right? Because why not? Because that would make a better team. Because if he's got his, something going on, you know, he's a high-powered, successful guy, and then there's this high-powered, successful woman, really, he should be attracted to her, shouldn't he? Because then it's like, whoa, we're with this power couple. That's amazing. So, but, but guys are sometimes not attracted to that. But isn't that just a similar thing? It's like we, like neither gender can really help what sort of ticks their boxes yeah it's like this that's a good point i mean um it sounds like when you have those sort of things together it's this entire mismatch so you have the girl who uh, who finds a really great guy who's successful in his endeavors and then finds the player who's not at all but then ends up going there and then you yeah. have right and then <laughs> and then you have <laughs> um the latter, which is the same complete opposite thing. Um, I think it all just boils down to the game. Like, I, I hate the game. It's terrible. This, this, this terrible <laughs> game. Um, and this, I, I, I've been, it's the art of seduction. 
the art of war, the art of whatever. It's it's this very challenging way to um, yeah. build a relationship in such a really difficult time. The the dating culture th today is so different from the way it was 20, 50 years ago, where technology was not so like these days men have many options you can swipe and find a new beautiful woman and like yeah. finger versus um i think for women like like men they're they're visually um enticed by uh, a female body mm. I think, right and then you've got the woman who like will go through and and swipe and and will probably say no to like 90 percent of men because we're not even looking at the looks like it's yeah it's, it's not necessarily that, that, that we're looking for. And so there's also mm. that issue too. So when it comes to this mismatch of falling in love with this, this person, that's not great for us. It's, we've lost the, the evaluation skill to actually understand how to develop a relationship the right way where <clears> we're <throat> like looking into infatuation and, and something that's easy and playful and fun. And mm. Um, but have you ever been attracted to a guy that you shouldn't have been? Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to tell us more? Um, it's, 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 uh, I, I mentioned it before. It's, it's the guy who like was, I was in a situation ship and yeah. I, um, was afraid to bring up the, what the hell are we? It's been a couple years. Well, yeah. And so yeah. I, I didn't realize that he was in a long-term relationship and he was cheating on her. Wow, wow, well, there you go. But we're, it, it, it's amazing, isn't it? Like how much of a cliche it is that women talk about, you know, I like the bad boys, you know, like you never see, like, and again, this is obviously, you know, what I, what I observe in my own life, but also just things like TV programs and stuff like that and reality shows and stuff like that. You always get these women who go onto, you know, Love Island or something. It's like, oh, you know, I always fall for the bad boys, you know, and it, you never, ever, ever see a woman who goes, Oh, you know, I just always fall for those really sensible guys who like, you know, who've got a really solid job and they wear gat ca uh, gat car keys. Oh, I just this can't get enough of those guys. Boy. I want to redefine this bad boy thing because maybe well, now I'm not into the bad boy. So I want to know what this bad boy is now. What is the well, I mean, I, I, you know, like I've, I've tried to define it myself. I mean, like <laughs> I talk a lot, I, I talk a lot, a lot about, um, dark tribe characteristics, um, which have been aligned with um, the, or, or, or have been described as being what the bad boy is, is kind of co constitutes, which is like um, uh, narcissism, Machiavellianism and psychopathy. And it, it's said that a combination of those three things together um, makes guys, I think, it, I mean, probably works with women in different ways, but it makes guys um, more sexually successful but and also more successful in business situations as well because people like that tend to do very well in in business in politics in other aspects of, of life but um that sort of combination of sort of narcissism where i suppose they've got this outsized confidence this this oversized sort of sense of their own worth or an important sex appeal whatever machiavellianism you know they're a bit sneaky they don't mind breaking the rules a little bit and then psychopathy and like whenever I talk about that, I, I I mean it's not necessarily like the serial killer idea of psychopathy, but more like the sort of like a slight lack of empathy. Do you know what I mean? They're not they've got that slight coldness about them, and I think a combination of those things makes up a a, a bad boy. I suppose does that make sense? Does that do you agree with that? Yeah, that sounds like a really great way to describe a bad boy. Like. Mm. But I mean, this is, I mean, that's just me backwards engineering it or, or having, you know, having looked into this and, um, you know, um, but, but of course women, as I say, will just use the term without breaking it down like that. But it's just, it's just that those guys that they've got that thing, they've got that like edge to them, right. That, that she just finds sexy. She just finds it att att attractive. And I don't, I don't know. It's, it, it's a big problem in dating, isn't it? For guys, because guys, a lot of guys, kind of are nice guys really i mean fun fundamentally they're just a decent guy they're just looking for a nice girl and why should why couldn't it be simple you know um, and then it's the guys who've got those that that sort of edge that kind of x factor that, that ends up getting the girls and i think that's frustrating for a lot of guys who aren't aware of those dynamics you know who haven't worked this stuff out yet absolutely it is a very interesting dynamic and um it's 
it's challenging because I think that's the reason why we have this this mismatch. Uh, I'm, mm. I'm, I'm not really sure what's going on psychologically as to why that's creating so much attraction. Yeah, yeah. You know? but like, how, how does that create so much attraction between men and women? Well, I don't, I, I don't know, really. I think, well, I, th I think what it is, is that, like I was saying before, I think we all want things that we can't quite have. Do you know what I mean? So the guy that she can't quite get, or the guy that she's always afraid, half afraid he's going to leave, or there's always that sort of, she can't quite get him. I think that is, that creates more desire. Whereas the guy who's a bit of an open book and it's all very easy and straightforward, that just seems unchallenging. You know, guys, all, women always say, I want a challenge, don't they? Um <laughs> I want a guy who's going to challenge me. Have you said that? Um, I think I think here's what's interesting is when I've gotten into relationships, getting into that relationship was challenging. And I look back and I remember saying, you know, it, it was kind of nice to kind of like have that challenge, I suppose. Um, but I've never said that outright to like a guy or, or anything. Could you define and challenge is is are you talking about like what exactly are you talking about with the challenge well i mean again I'm, it's something that i've heard women say i mean i think what they mean is they want somebody who's not going to be a pushover you know i've had women say to me before um oh, okay i've had women say to me before um you know i i'm trying to think now this is a long time ago but i had a woman saying something to me like um Oh, I just wish you. When I was when I was in more of my nice guy kind of phase, I had women saying, "Oh, I wish you were just like more. I wish you'd just be a bit more mysterious. I wish you'd leave me guessing a bit more. You know, things like that." It's kind of really weird to actually hear it, hear it verbalized. But then, in situations, the situations where women have liked me the most have been the situations where I've ended up behaving the the, the worst. <laughs> to be honest, you know. And and in, inadvertently as well. I mean not I I'm not sitting there going, hmm, how can I be how can I be really bad in this situation? You know, it's just because I was less into the situation perhaps than they were, or, you know, I had other things going on in my life at the time and blah, blah, blah. And it, you know, my 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 observation is that in those situations I found the girls to be much more they've wanted to try to retain me. You know, they've been much more sort of like trying to trying to pull me in. Whereas when you get the opposite situation, when I've really liked a girl, they're like, oh God, she's really amazing. Um, those are the situations where the girls tended to push away. So like, so in, 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 in knowing all of that stuff and in having those experiences, then what you try to do is think, okay, so how do I, and how can clients or, or people that, you know, consume dating content you know how can how can we moderate our behavior in such a way so that we're not putting off the, the people that we actually really like you know but it but you're right i mean it, it is unfortunate that that we kind of have to play what are effectively games but that just seems to be the way of things